So far we've talked about various areas of the university. Now we're going to focus on the classroom and talk about faculty. So to tell us a little bit more about faculty life, I have Dr. Ed O'Rear, and he does so much with the institution, I'm actually going to read it off of a card. He is the former director of the University of Oklahoma Bioengineering Center. He is the Francis W. Wynn Professor for Chemical, Biological, and Materials Engineering. And then he's also an adjunct professor of research dental materials for the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. In addition to that, he is also the chair of the Faculty Senate. So thank you so much for joining me today, Dr. O'Rear. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for that nice introduction. So let's start from, from your perspective as a faculty member and your perspective as the chair of the Faculty Senate. How would you define the role of faculty? The faculty serves as the core or base of the university as an institution. Uh, they provide continuity to the operation and culture of the university. So when you ask about the role of the faculty, you're really asking in my mind, what is the role of the university? Universities exist for the benefit of society and for finding truth. The currency of a university is knowledge. The university is about storing, disseminating, and generating knowledge. More and more, it is also about application of knowledge in a knowledge-based economy. Faculty deal with knowledge on a daily basis. I want to emphasize that there is a higher level to this and not just collecting facts. I'm talking about the methods and processes related to knowledge. For example, how does one analyze and synthesize facts to make good use of information? That differs substantially from simply memorizing facts. The French philosopher Montaigne said, to know by heart is not to know. What does that mean, to know by heart is not to know? You might be able to recite a poem or a line from the Declaration of Independence, but that is not the same as being able to understand its deeper meaning. If you bear with me, I'll share a line I like from Virgil's Enid. The liquor that a vessel first contains leaves behind a taste that long remains. Literally, this refers to a lingering taste of the original wine stored in a clay amphora or container. That original flavor permeates other liquids stored later in that same container. A deeper meaning, however, relates to the values and manners taught to a child. The child is also a vessel, and the habits instilled in the child continue on in the adult. So we've learned deeper meaning well, let me return to the methods of handling knowledge. Another example is critical thinking. In what ways can we assess the value of data? Through the internet and other media, we are bombarded with information. The old adage, don't believe everything you read, remains good advice today. In one of my classes, I give engineering students an exercise where they are asked to find errors in basic equations. Critical thinking applies more broadly in all sorts of disciplines and is very important in a democratic society. Another important knowledge process involves lifelong learning. Lifelong learning means instilling students with the ability to research topics on their own. We can't teach our students everything they will need over the course of their lives. Instead, we endeavor to empower them with the processes that will make them independently successful. That's the primary difference between education and training. One often hears the role of the faculty encompassing teaching, research, and creative activity and service. These effectively capture the major duties of a professor. I like to contrast teaching and research in terms of potential impact. Teaching has a high probability of having a significant effect on a relatively small number of people. I sincerely believe that what I teach in my courses will really help those students, but it will not directly affect people all over the world. Research, on the other hand, has the potential to help people the world over, but there's a low probability of solving very difficult and challenging problems. Certainly some professors excel at teaching while others stand out for their research. To the extent that it can, I believe that a department at a university optimizes its overall performance by making the best use of the mix of strengths of its individual faculty members. While a faculty represents the core of the university, I hasten to add 
They are not the most important of the various constituencies. Students are. Professors teach students knowledge and the processes for handling knowledge. Many go on to become leaders in business, government, and society. 